Hello everyone, and welcome back. It's time for part two of the baby's crib. I've spent quite a bit of time with my tape measure out here measuring things, and just in my mind trying to picture the final result, or not exactly the final result, but how to get to the final result. I have to think about things like the thickness of the board versus the slats, uh, I'm trying to, to incorporate some of the things I did in the first crib with the second crib because this is a totally different type of wood species that I'm doing this crib in versus the other one. This one I'm using red cedar or aromatic cedar. The first one I did it all in uh, wild black cherry. So anyway, uh, these here, I definitely am going to want this to be the same thickness as this so then I can add stuff to the face of it and um, I just get more options when I don't have this lip. And if you're building a crib, and if you think about it, uh, this post or style on the side, and this one here, this is the front of the crib, this side is, then you've got your two side pieces, then you've got your back. Everything, like the side pieces hook between here and here and hold it together. The actual um, spring hooks into those side pieces. So as far as, like, you could tear all of this out, just completely get rid of it, and your crib pretty much consists of this, this piece, and these pieces that go across. You can do anything you want with here as long as it doesn't go beyond it this way, but you can go out this way as long as you want, or in the back if you want to get a, a heavier, like a pillar look here. So that's why now is the important time for me to think about what I want to do um, in the future towards the end of this crib so I don't, you know, do something that I have to totally redo again. With the last crib that I did, I had this column piece coming down just like this, but this board wasn't in here. That crib was open underneath, except for I went here then and took a piece and cut it up like this, kind of just, you know, making it a little bit more fancy. So what I'm trying to concentrate on is I need to build this, this square first, or get the pieces cut for it. And then after that we can kind of start fitting pieces together and making it look like a crib. One for a top piece I do like. I like uh, this red cedar more when it has more white in it, but the top doesn't matter because a lot of that gets covered up. There'll be another board that's going along here. But this one here, I'm not real happy with that one. First of all, it doesn't, uh, you know, you have to watch with your planer and you'll get some of this white. It doesn't have enough white in it and it has a bow in it like this. Uh, if the top had that, it wouldn't be a problem. My other board will take that out. The bottom more than likely isn't going to have one. So this, which is right now playing down to the same thickness as what I did those uh, spindles or slats, this one will become a spindle. And I will find a more exciting board that I think looks better. much prettier board. So 
So here now you can roughly see what I've been doing here. <laughs> Starting to get a rough idea there. All of those spindles or slats, they're all too wide. They have to be planed down, but uh, I always like to keep everything oversized and then plane it down towards the end. Well, it's about 8.30 at night right now. You would never want to leave your wood on a concrete floor overnight. <laughs> you would be warped by morning. You can get the general idea of it here now though. And when I do this, like uh, that is the actual size of the crib, everything. But now on the top there'll be more stuff added and then I can beef it up a little bit. But at least we're getting the main square. And of course this is the easiest piece of the whole entire crib. The sides have, uh, ang they, they curve upward, the back will have a curve, but it's good to do this easy stuff first so you kind of get your, um, I don't build cribs every day so you kind of get your crib legs back and uh, it makes it a lot easier when it comes time to do the more complicated rounded stuff and curves and stuff like that. Okay everyone, well I'm gonna run inside I came out here, I grabbed a beer, I sat out here, thought I would think about the crib and get some ideas. Ended up texting with Melissa, doing comments on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. <laughs> I'm going in. Good morning everybody. I'm back out here in the workshop. I think the first thing I'm going to do is finish these slats or spindles or whatever because I still have the table saw set and I know if I run it through here and cut it and then run it three times on the joiner it'll be the exact same width as the other ones so uh, as much as I don't want to start with this I think we will and uh, then at least I got this done and almost all the parts then are set are uh, cut for that front piece on the crib of them to do that front and I have 13 of these that are all cut to size they still have to I still will run them through the uh, router to round the edges I don't like to have any sharp edges where the kid can grab a hold of it or anything so but at least they're cut well, what I'm doing right now is those two uprights on the crib that are on, that we've been working on that front part. Uh, the other one that I did, I routered them just kind of uh, three lines going down them, and I don't really know that it's necessary with the uh, the red cedar because it's got so much character in it versus the black cherry. But I am going to do a test board here just to see what it would look like 
Uh, I hated doing it the last time because, you know, you go through all that work and then if your router is off just a little bit, um, you'll have a, like a crooked line going or something won't look right. So I definitely want to have a test piece here first. I do think that will add to it. I really do. I don't know how I, I'm not going to be staining the cedar at all. It's just going to be clear coat. So I don't know if you'll really see it or not, but it'll be there. So I think I'm going to do it anyway. And that looks pretty even too. I know, you know, I use this thing, you know, when I do use it, I use it quite a bit. And uh, it does have all the marks on the table, but I never really trust that they're going to be close enough. <laughs> but that looks pretty good. I think that looks real nice. When you have rough boards like this, sometimes, you know, they're going to have a little bit of a crown to it. Uh, so what I do when I'm running it through the joiner, I will take the first time through and I'll run it through, but only push weight on this side. Because this, you know, this is straight and this is straight. If I keep it just on this side, uh, it'll eventually take that crown out because it'll ride on here and you might be going through and all of a sudden the board gets to here and that blade isn't hitting anything. That's fine, just pull it through, keep the pressure on this side, run it through a second time, all of a sudden that blade's going to be cutting farther, and then eventually you'll go through and you'll hear the blade hit the whole entire way. The only thing is after that, then you're going to have a board that's like thinner and thicker, you know, on whatever end, so then you want to take it and run it through the table saw to get it the exact same width and then you can turn it around and do it one time here going through the joiner. Then you'll have a perfect board that has no crowns in it or anything and it's the same size. This board here, now that I straightened it, is four and a quarter over here. And it's about four and a sixteenth over here. So I'm gonna set this at four inches. If you were, you know, if you needed a two inch board, you would just set it at two inches. But for me, this board can be any width I want. It's on the bottom of the back part of the crib, so I want to keep it as wide as I can. That will keep my spindle shorter. Nobody actually ever sees this board. It's kind of hidden down there, but uh, I do want it to be the same. side pieces for the back of the crib and then this is the bottom piece right here. Now we need to cut a top one on this I'm totally going, uh, you know I always put a curve in the crib and stuff so I'm just trying to make the square right now and then I can get creative. So 
so now I'm taking my template that I had on my the other crib that I built with that rounded top on it and uh, I'm just fitting it to this crib so that I can I, I need to, to cut a rounded board to go on top of this board and then and all, it doesn't have to be a good board none of this is going to be seen this will all be covered but you'll see it on the back side otherwise I would cut it out out of like pine or something else but I'm not going to be able to do that because that would probably drive me crazy I'm going to run in right now and have some lunch. At least we're kind of getting a general outline of this whole thing. It'll look, I mean, it's hard to even explain on top. I know what I'm going to do. Uh, I just can't really explain it, but <laughs> you'll just have to wait and see. Well, I'm done with lunch. I'm back out here. Uh, now it's time. I need to make 13 of the slats or the spindles that are finished, 33 and a quarter inches. So I think I'm going to get started on that. Happily, those are all done. Now I just have a total of 12 more to do before the crib is finished. Well, this is the general shape now of the back of the crib. And what I'll be creating here, I don't know if you guys watched, like I've said a few times when I made the first crib, but I make a thing here that'll be like these, but all tight together. And I'll have it start maybe an eighth inch below this and then it's going to curve and curve and do that along the whole thing. So eventually here I'm going to have to glue, I think this is 53. Yeah, anyway, I'll have like 55 inches of glued boards together. And that gets, this cedar is a lot more forgiving and easy to work with compared to the black cherry. Because once I, I build this thing and glue it, then I have to run it cross grain through the planer. And I remember it took so much time to do the last crib one. And I was so worried when I ran it through the planer, but it did go through without gouging it all out and everything. So hopefully it won't do it this time. See, that'll go on and it'll flush it up with this. And then this here, I think I would have liked it better if I would have put the post all the way up, but it doesn't matter. I just need to put a piece in here because then after that's done, I take a piece that's, say, three inches, and I go over all of that, and I curve that up and around, and then I'll actually put a return that goes back and ends at the, the back side here. So, yeah, it's getting there. When it's time to start putting that oil-based poly on there, this thing is going to come alive. It's going to be absolutely gorgeous.
Well everyone, it's about 10 minutes after 8 o'clock at night. I was out here this morning at 7.30. I think I'm just going to call it a day. I think I'm going to end this video also because this is already a couple days in, which takes a long time to edit. And now I'm sitting here trying to figure out this top. When I did the last crib, I did it like this. And I'm just lining up some of these boards to see if I like it or not, just to get the, you know, the feel of it. And I guess I don't mind it one bit when it has the knots in it like that. I think that would look good. But if you're just going to do the white and the red, I don't like it. The other one with the black cherry, that crib wasn't busy. And with this red cedar, it's already busy. So... I'm going to have to think about that for a little bit, what I'm going to do. So, yeah, I'll just, uh, it'll come to me. <laughs> it always does. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. I will see you guys on the next video.